Hello gamers! In our optimization guides we always try to squeeze maximum graphical quality with possibly highest performance, which we consider smooth around 60 FPS. All comparisons were made on RTX 3060 with our settings choose with additionally disabled dynamic resolution to prevent distortion of the results. Before going into settings please remember that we pretty much in every guide recommend to use NVIDIA DLDSR which will allow you to play on higher resolution than native resolution of your display. It's also good to update DLSS files for Forbidden West to recently released version 3.6 which is already reported of having better quality of upscaling. We're gonna make a separate comparison video about it. If you don't know how to turn on DLDSR or update DLSS file, you can learn it from our collective support video on this channel. Link you can find in the description of this video. In DLSS Club, you can find optimization guides and upscaling comparisons for various games. We are still a young channel and if you like it, please consider subscribing us. Let's start from enabling a resizable bar feature, because it seems that Horizon benefits a lot from it. And it's just free performance. Depending on CPU load, it can make even 15% performance difference. For my setup is always minimum 5. To turn it on, download small software called NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Link in the description. Open it and on the top left type Horizon. Pick Forbidden West Profile. And then find on the list Rebar Feature option. If this option is grayed out for you, you have it disabled in BIOS or your motherboard does not support this feature. Now enable it. Apply changes. And done. Now we are ready to start with actual game settings. Having a full screen is ironically quite important as we are going to use DLDSR. We are recommending using full screen to avoid problems and situations when your desktop resolution is different than the in-game DLDSR resolution. Speaking of resolution, on 3060 we are using DLDSR 1.78 multiplier on 1080p monitor which results in 1440p. If you also have 1080p display but more powerful card with more than 8GB VRAM, definitely try 2.25 multiplier which is 1620p. For better monitors like 1440p I wouldn't recommend going above 1.78 DLDSR multiplier because render resolution can swiftly ramp up to some crazy levels with heat to performance. For the aspect ratio, use your display setting. Funny thing about this option is that you can actually use a wide or ultra wide aspect ratio and play with the cinematic letter boxes. It doesn't change the render resolution, so the performance stays the same. But I don't recommend it unless you like having a more cinematic experience. It's good to keep VSync enabled unless you force it through the NVIDIA panel or you use FreeSync or G-Sync. NVIDIA Reflex by default is on, but there is an option to turn it on with additional boost. On RTX 3060, we didn't measure any core frequency differences with boost being enabled. But for other GPUs it might be better. Definitely worth trying. Dynamic resolution scaling is an interesting feature. It scales render resolution to achieve desired FPS with peaked upscaling or analyzing technique, but somehow DLLA with dynamic resolution is different than DLSS. Obviously DLLA with lower than native resolution should be just DLSS, but not in Horizon. I suspect that they use different DLSS preset for both options or dynamic DLSS is less aggressive in scaling. As you can see DLLA have a bit more grainy or shimmery look in some circumstances. Other than waterfall effects I did not notice any other substantial differences and generally speaking, use the option that you like more. Our pick is dynamic DLSS. Now let's take a look over the graphical settings. Please keep in mind that video recording is devouring a minimum 500 megabytes of VRAM and around 5 to 7 frames per second. For all cards with 8 gigabytes of VRAM, I strongly recommend high. More can cause stuttering, especially in cutscenes. On very high with upscaled 1440p, several times we were noticing that even 11 gigabytes of VRAM were used. Texture filtering is very gentle to modern GPUs and barely affects performance. I recommend to keep it at 16. This option is responsible for preserving definition of textures at high observation angles. For shadows, we were initially quite fine on medium setting, with its chunky boost to FPS compared to high. 
But after playing longer, we started to notice more and more places in the game with awkwardly casted shadows. Therefore we decided to attack shadows on high instead, which looks much more defined and fixes the issue. Very low, low and medium have pretty much the same quality of the shadows. Performance differences come very likely from a different draw distance. As medium has a tempting performance boost, the quality of shadows have a huge step up between medium and high. High also looks identical to very high in terms of quality. And again, performance differences must come from the draw distance. So we stick to high. For screen space shadows, I recommend to keep this option on. Its performance cost is very small and perfectly complements the next option, which is... Ambient Occlusion. SSAO has incredible impact for visuals for only a minor cost in performance. We recommend keeping it enabled. Screen space reflections in the horizon are rather ugly, but still keep up with the task of empathizing some details on water and complement quite commonly used cube maps, which are special textures of surroundings put on the water surface by the developers. That's why if you disable it entirely you will still see some reflections. For level of detail we recommend high. Everything below changes even entire assets to lower quality and never really renders their better, more detailed versions. Having all these small details and the full version of assets compared to medium makes it worthwhile to use high, despite the hit in the frame rate. High and very high are looking identical. Performance differences between them come again from the draw distance, which is subtle. For hail quality I recommend medium, as it can save us 3-4% of performance for minor difference in quality. Crowd quality recommendation is medium or high, but if you have very old CPU and in towns you have unstable frame rates, this is the first option I will lower and test if it helped. Also Reaper feature which we already enabled at the beginning tends to help for CPU bottleneck scenarios. Terrain quality applies entirely to ground. It does not apply to details of rocks, etc. Higher settings enhance the tessellation of the ground textures, giving it more three-dimensional depth. Even though visually medium is tempting, the difference in performance between this and high is so small that our recommendation is high or very high. For water quality, high is the only option that actually makes sense. I couldn't find any differences between low and medium, but high is already giving kind of bulkiness to rendered water. I did not reach yet the point in the game with oceans but I read that low and medium do not render waves, only high dose, and with its low performance cost recommendation is absolutely for high. Cloud's quality levels look very similar over all settings, with the most noticeable change starting between medium and high, because on high and very high the game starts to render volumetric clouds. Lower settings slightly downgrade the quality of normal background clouds, especially while using upscaling as we do. Yet, I still recommend low, as it's barely noticeable anyway, 
and rare volumetric clouds are not worth 4 to 7 percent of a performance difference. For transparency quality, high res is recommended because it greatly affects quality of things that we really often look at. For example, glider, all splashes in the water, arrow impacts on machines, blight particles in the air, etc. It's pity that we have only two options and nothing in between, because low is just ugly and high looks as it should. I literally couldn't find place where parallax occlusion option take an effect. After some research I knew that this option enhances some textures to look more dimensional but it's not using tessellation. On reddit I saw mentions about difference in some sand textures. For me, if this option is so subtle and rarely visible, it's simply not worth 3 to 5% of performance at all. For field of view, our recommendation is plus 15 degrees, but this is more of an individual preference. Depending on how much performance headroom you have left according to your GPU or desired FPS, and if your graphic card is stronger than RTX 3060, of course go for more. Field of view and resolution should be one of the first settings to be bumped up if you are having more computing power. As through the majority of the previous settings, we were avoiding significant compromises. For the rest of the options, I treat them always as a very individual choices. I personally don't like and always desired depth of field, blurs and vignette. Bloom actually is quite meaningful in some horizon scenes. Like for example the one that you are looking at. So I left it on. The LDSR sharpness image anyway during the downscaling process. That's why we decided to stay on zero sharpness. And lens flares causes nice light shine during sunny scenes. Or for example meanwhile monsters scanning surroundings with their eyes. This way we've come to the end of our guide. Horizon Forbidden West is a very solid port, allowing us to enjoy its beauty even on the entry level GPUs. And trying to squeeze best visuals with decent performance, we could not get rid of the impression that majority of the graphical settings have really only two options, with some stepping in joyousness. But still our reception is absolutely positive. We are planning more videos from Horizon and technological comparisons. If this video was helpful, please consider subscribing our channel. See you, See you soon! soon.